morning, everybody. Beautiful morning for a walk. It's snowing outside. There's my water source for brewing, Lake Michigan. I count my blessings every day that I live so close to this beautiful lake. Do a lot of fishing in this lake. Come down here and just hang out. It's a wonderful spot to just be. I'm not a city boy and I'd rather be out in the country, but I do count myself lucky that this is one of the things that comes with living in Milwaukee. So anyhow, it's another brew day and I just wanted to get out and do a little walk first before I uh, get started on the brew day. Soak in some of this snowy weather. It's getting close to Christmas. We need some snow on the ground around here to make it feel like it's Christmas. So anyhow, take it in everybody. That is beautiful Lake Michigan. Let's get the brew day started. Good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, December 9th. We are two days away from the brew day, so you know what that means. It's time to make a starter. It's a pretty simple process to make a yeast starter. All you're gonna need is a pot, one cup of DME, 1400 milliliters of water, and your beaker, and your yeast. And the yeast that we will be doing today is 2112 California Lager. 2112, yeah. If you're a Rush fan, you know what I'm talking about. Now we bring the water up to a boil. We're gonna add the DME. You're gonna to wanna to stir a lot, otherwise you're gonna get a boil over. I usually reduce the heat a little bit, just so that I don't get that boil over. You only need to stir for a little bit, then the foam kind of subsides and it starts boiling. I'm gonna let it boil for about five minutes or so. And then we're gonna get it back into the beaker and get it over to the sink and cool it down. Here's what the boil over starts to look like. So you either gotta get it off the flame or turn it down. But it rises up quick. Best thing you can do is just turn down your flame a little bit and stir it. You only have to stir it for a little bit. And it'll start to subside. You don't want to boil over because this stuff is super sticky and if it gets on your stove top your wife is going to kill you. Time to pour the hot wort into the beaker. So be very careful. This stuff is hot. Don't want to splash it on you. Got a sink full of water, so I'm just going to take my beaker, put it in, throw a little piece of tin foil on the top, and we're going to let this sit for about 20 minutes to a half an hour to cool down. We want to get the temperature between 65 and 70 uh, so we can pour our yeast in there and get it going. Everything is cooled down and it's time to add the yeast. I'm going to take that off really quick. I have already sanitized the pouch and the scissors. I just want to sanitize uh, basically what you're cutting. Sanitize the scissors, make sure everything's clean. Don't want an infection. And 
that's about it. I'll just take this downstairs, I'm gonna put it on the stir plate and get it going. I am back from my snowy walk outside and it's time to brew. But before I get started, just want to let you guys know that I'm going to change the format up a little bit. So I've been watching some YouTube videos, you know, brewing videos. Uh, also gotten a few requests on this. Uh, I'm going to try to be more detailed um, with the brewing process. Uh, and basically just explain a little bit more. We're going to have some how-to kind of stuff in the next several videos. And I am not a pro brewer. Um, I'm just a home brewer. But I'm going to do my best to try and detail the process a bit. So if you guys have any suggestions, uh, you got any ideas, things that you think I should be covering more, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to accommodate um, all those requests. <laughs> Let's go over the ingredient list for today. So our target OG is going to be 1055, uh, IBUs are 4849, the SRM is 30, and the ABV, or at least the estimated ABV at this point, is going to be 5.5%, but that's what we're going for. So a lower alcohol by volume beer, which is great. I've already got a couple of those on tap already. And it's great to have those in the winter, drinking good brews, but not getting wasted while you sit on the couch. Today's grain bill is going to be two row. Uh, we're at 85% or 8.75 pounds. Uh, we're going to have some English black malt. That's 5% of the grist or 8 ounces. We're going to have some caramel 60L. That's also 5% of the grist, or 8 ounces. And some pale chocolate malt. That's also 5% of the grist, or 8 ounces. The hops for today will be Chinook, Eureka, and Mosaic. Now inside the shopping list over here, you can see that one of the hops says EXP5256. Now at the time when this recipe was designed, Experimental Hop 5256 did not have a name. It now has a name. It is Eureka. So you will be picking up one ounce of Chinook, uh, 0.75 ounces of Mosaic, and 0.75 ounces of Eureka. So at T minus 60, we're going to add one ounce of Chinook. And at flame out, we're going to add 0.75 ounces of Eureka and 0.75 ounces of Mosaic. And then we're going to do a 20-minute hop stand before we start cooling the wort. Uh, the yeast for today, which I probably showed you a little earlier in this video, is 2112 California Lager Yeast. And this is my starter that's been going since uh, Thursday night. So it's just about ready to go. Just want to show you a little something about the grain mill. So I got this grain mill as a present from my wife. Uh, she got this from Northern Brewer. So I do believe it's the monster mill. Uh, you can attach a drill to it. I bought a 7 amp Black & Decker cheap. I think this uh, drill was 20, 25 bucks. Um, so you don't need something really expensive to drive this. But you do need something with a few amps. So I got a 7 amp and it's more than enough power to drive this mill. Uh, one of the things I want to show you also is the setting uh, for my mill. I find that if you can take a credit card 
and slip it right between those wheels there. And it's got a little bit of uh, resistance. That's about the best setting. Now, if it's smaller than that, sometimes you'll put the grain inside and you'll go to start grinding it and nothing happens. The, the grains will not go through the grinding wheels. So you have to widen it out a little bit. And over the course of time and some experimenting, I found that widening it to the, about the thickness of a credit card is perfect. I've heated the strike water up to 165 and now I'm transferring it from my hot liquor tank over to my mash tun. Um, I'm going to bring in four and a half gallons of water to start the process for mashing and then I'll do a batch sparge. I have mashed in, but my temp is just a little bit low. So right now it's almost, almost 150. So I've got a little flame going on down underneath the mash tun, just to warm it up a little bit. Once I get to 151, then I'll shut down the flame or I'll bring it down very, very low just to kind of hold the temp. I have started the recirculation process. So I just want to show you that really quick that you don't want it coming out too fast. Just want it coming out a little bit. Just like that. I've got my bottom valve wide open. And my top valve is about three quarters shut. I am now adding in the water for the batch sparge. So the temperature that I brought the water up to was 200 degrees to put in here. And it usually ends up being about 170 or so. And we're gonna let this sit at 170 for five minutes. I'm gonna do a little bit more recirculation while I'm letting it sit. And then uh, we'll draw out the rest of the wort and get it into the boil kettle. So we drew off about three and a half, a little over three and a half gallons of wort on first runnings. I took a gravity reading and it is 1064, which uh, is what I about expected on first runnings. Uh, right now I've got uh, the batch sparge going. I'm gonna recirculate that for a few minutes and then draw that off and add it over. So we get up to about six, maybe, a little over six gallons. I drew a little wart off and this is the scotch we're adding today for the hot scotchy. So it's a double wood matured in two distinct casks aged 12 years. I'm normally not a fan of doing hot scotchies with uh, darker wart but we're going to try this one find out how it goes. Ooh, that is actually really good. It's not too roasty. It's definitely sweet. Um, some chocolate. Uh, right now, not too much coffee. I'm not getting a lot of coffee, but a little bit, a little hint. But this scotch, uh, this is the first time I've tried this scotch. Usually I do Abelauer or I'll do like a, a blended scotch or something like that. This particular scotch I haven't tried yet, and I think it's pretty good. Cheers, everybody. Yes. I am drawing off the second runnings now, and then I'm gonna add this to the boil kettle, and get things rolling.
that right there is some beautiful wart. Let me take a temperature to see where we're at. Now look at that. We're at 55 degrees. So it cooled down to 55, which is much lower than I anticipated. So I'm going to throw it inside here and warm it up. There it is. It's at 63.9 degrees and it only took about an hour to heat it up from 55 to 63.9. So I am going to oxygenate the wort and get the yeast in right away.